this video, the Center for Teaching at the University of Veterinary Medicine Hanover will demonstrate the placement of a continuous lumbered suture. This video will focus on the technique of the suture. When placing continuous sutures, a single thread is used to create a stitch across the entirety of the wound. For this, a beginning and ending knot are required for each suture. Continuous sutures have multiple advantages, such as a quicker application and an even wound adaptation. Furthermore, continuous sutures are gentler to the surrounding tissue. This, however, comes with the risk of the entire wound opening if only a single knot fails. Irregular wound shapes also make the placement of continuous sutures more difficult. When placing continuous sutures, the stitch should begin on the side of the suturing hand. The Lambert suture is suitable, in conjunction with another suture, for the closure of hollow viscera, such as the uterus, bladder, intestine, or crop. This suture pattern both begins and ends in a V-shaped perforation outside of the wound gap. A Lambert suture is always placed in two rows, which means that there are two sutures above one another. It is possible to use a Lambert suture either as the first layer for an initial closure of the organ or as the second layer, for example, above a simple continuous suture. This is, however, difficult to practice on the model. Therefore, this video will only focus on the Lambert suture. In addition, this pattern inverts the tissue without fully perforating it. When suturing hollow viscera, it is vital that the suture remains exclusively in the serosa and muscle layer of the tissue. A perforation into the organ's lumen would create a wicking effect along the suture material, bringing liquid outside of the organ. Needed for the skills lab exercise are a needle holder, a pair of surgical scissors, anatomical forceps, the suture pad, as well as gloves and a needle and thread combination. When placing the suture on a patient, absorbable suture material is used. The needle and thread combination contains an atraumatic needle without an eyelet. Instead, the thread is connected to the needle directly. This allows for a smoother perforation of the tissue when deriving the needle, causing less of a reaction. Therefore, an atraumatic needle is better suited for finer and more fragile tissue, such as internal organs, blood vessels, or the skin. In contrast, traumatic needles are separate from their thread. The needle's eyelet must be threaded before use. This eyelet and thread create a double perforation of the tissue when the needle is driven through, creating a stronger reaction. Traumatic needles should only be used on more robust tissue, such as muscle or fascia. A few general notes for the procedure. This video primarily focuses on the suture technique. Therefore, there will be no mention of placement or number of knots, since these parameters are highly variable and depend on the species, the individual patient, as well as the state of the tissue itself, and whether it is the beginning or end of the suture. When suturing, the needle is only ever held using instruments. It is vital that the needle's tip is never grasped, as this quickly leads to blunting. Furthermore, the thread should only ever be pulled on with fingers. No instruments are used for this. The needle holder with fixated needle is held in the dominant hand, with the remaining thread collected in the palm. A right-handed suture will be demonstrated here, subsequently beginning on the right side of the wound. In the first step, a V-shaped perforation is created into intact tissue outside of the wound gap. The points of both Vs point away from the wound itself. For this, the tissue at the wound's edge can be lifted with forceps, and the needle is driven from outwards to the center through the serosa and muscle layers. The needle is grasped with forceps and can be once again placed into the middle to lower third of the needle holder. The needle should be fixated in the position as it will be required in the following step. The ends of the suture material can now be fixated with a surgical knot. It is also possible to utilize a slip knot for this, which is demonstrated in this video. Finally, the remaining thread can be shortened to one scissor's blade's width. The following suture pattern lies perpendicular to the wound gap, 
alternating on either side of the wound. The edge of the wound is grasped with forceps, lifted, and the needle is driven through the outside of the tissue, allowing it to exit on the same side. This procedure is continued on the opposite side, parallel to the first stitch. After each stitch, the tissue is compressed carefully without endangering fingers or with the help of a swab. Ideally, this provides constant tension of the thread, creating a good wound closure. The suture is once again finished with a V-shaped perforation outside of the wound gap. While tightening the suture, it is important to leave a loop after the first stitch, as this will be required for the closing of the knot. The suture thread and loop are shortened to one scissors blade's width. Finally, the suture is inspected for proper closure.